Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to make a website using Jekyll on macOS. Jekyll is a program that generates static HTML websites. You don't need to know any kind of coding to use it. You just need to be able to run some terminal commands. I'll show you how to make a Jekyll website. Then after that, I'll show you how to upload it to GitHub and how to host it for free on GitHub pages. Then I'll show you how you can connect it with your own domain name. The whole process should take like 10 minutes. But first, you need to have three things before we start. You need to have a GitHub account. You can get it for free on github.com. You also need to get the GitHub desktop app, and you need to have Homebrew installed on your Mac. But you can also get that from the Homebrew website. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install Ruby. Mac OS already has Ruby installed, but it's an old version of Ruby and it requires administrator privileges in order to install new things. So we shouldn't use this one. Let's use Homebrew and install a new version of Ruby. We'll type brew install Ruby. And that's going to install Ruby 3.0 over the existing version of Ruby that we already have. Great, it worked. But there's one issue. As you can see here, it says Ruby wasn't linked. But what that means is, even though it's installed, Terminal won't know where to find it. So we need to tell Terminal where to find it. But fortunately, they give us a command that we can copy and paste, which is going to do exactly that. Great. But still one more thing. We're about to install Jekyll. And we also need to tell Terminal where to find Jekyll once we install it, because that's going to be in a different place. So we can do that with almost the same command. That's going to be export path equals. And then this is the location of the Ruby gem directory. We're going to add that to our path. So both of these commands are going to apply to all of the future terminal windows that we open. So let's open a new terminal window. And if I type Ruby dash V, great. The new version of Ruby, it works. Now we just have to install Jekyll. Gem install Jekyll. And we also need another Ruby gem, which is called Bundler. So let's run this. Perfect. Everything we need to have installed is installed. I can close the terminal windows and open the GitHub desktop app. I'm going to create a new repository on my hard drive. Now this is important. I have to name the repository my GitHub username. This is my GitHub username dot GitHub dot IO. That's going to allow GitHub to know that this is the repository that I want to use as my website. So I'm going to create the repository. So this repository is going to store all of the files from my website. And it's also going to track all of the changes that I make. So anytime I can just go back in history. We're now going to go to repository, open in terminal. And this is a new terminal window. And as you can see, it's in the directory of my GitHub repository, which is also in the GitHub folder in my documents folder. Now we're going to run the command to make a new Jekyll site, which is just Jekyll new. And then we're going to put a dot, which refers to the current directory that we're in right now. Perfect. So it just added a bunch of files to this folder and I'm going to open this folder in the finder and here you can see the different components of the basic Jekyll site. There's a config file and inside this config file you can change the title of your site, the description, and you can also change the theme. Here there's some markdown files and these markdown files are the pages of the site. This is the home page and this is the about page. There's also a post directory, 
which is more pages, although these are now blog posts. So let's test the site and see what we got. First, we just need to run one more command before this will work. That's bundle add web brick. And this is one of the dependencies which is going to allow Jekyll to run a local server on your computer for testing. Great. So now that's done, all we need to do is type Jekyll serve to test. And we're going to run this with the live reload command, which allows us to edit the files of the website while we're testing. Cool. I'm going to copy the server address and I'm going to open that in the web browser. Great. Here's the site. We have a page and a blog post. So let's go back and let's take the about page and let's copy it. As you can see, the website updates right away. I'm going to make this a contact page. This is a markdown file, so it's pretty easy to edit. Now, I'm going to save this. And there you go. Updating and making pages in Jekyll is as easy as that. So this website right now is running on our computer, but it's not actually on the internet. So the next thing we need to do is to open the repository that we just created in GitHub. And here you're going to see all of the files that we just created and changed. And here for the history, I just want to write something that tells me what I just did. And I'm going to commit those changes. It's still on my computer, but once I click publish, it's going to upload it to GitHub. One other thing I have to do is I have to uncheck the keep this code private box. That's because on a free GitHub account, you can only host websites off of public repositories. So now when I publish, it's now just uploaded the whole website onto GitHub. If I go to this website right away, we're going to see a 404. But that's not a problem. It just means that GitHub is still updating. After a minute or so, I can just refresh the page. And there you go. The entire website is now uploaded and hosted on GitHub. This is free hosting, and you can even store files and images up to 100 megabytes on GitHub. When we want to make changes to the site, it's really just the same process again. So let's say I make a new post in the blog. It's going to update right away on the test site that we made. But of course, it's not going to be on the GitHub site yet. So all we have to do is go to GitHub. You'll see the changes that we made. I'll type a commit message. Commit and push. Now, after a minute or so, these changes are going to show up on the actual site. I'm going to, again, open a new terminal window at the location of the repository. And now I'm going to create a new file by typing echo my domain name, which is jamesmerza.com, and put that into the CNAME file. When that's done, I can come here right back to the repository and I'm going to commit the changes to the file that I just made and I'm going to upload it onto GitHub. 
That's going to tell GitHub the domain that we're connecting, so it knows to associate the GitHub Pages site with the domain. The final step is to go to the domain name provider. I have my domain name registered with Namecheap, and we're going to change the DNS settings. So here I have some settings already, and I'm just going to delete these because I won't need these anymore. These are the default settings. And I'm going to add two more records. There's definitely a number of ways you can set up your DNS, but this is just the simplest way to do it with GitHub Pages. So I'm going to add an alias record, and this alias is for the root domain, so that means when someone goes to jamesmerza.com without the www in front, and I'm going to point that to jamesmerza.github.io. I'm going to add one more record, and this is going to be a CNAME record, and this CNAME record is going to be for the www subdomain, and what this record is going to do is it's going to make the www subdomain the same as this root domain. So now that's done, we can save it. These changes don't happen instantly, but once the DNS refreshes, you'll find that your domain name points to your new website. It's that easy.